Terry Bauckham is one of the best examples of what one might call a modern traditional banjo player. But what is it about his playing that's so modern? And what is it about his playing that's traditional? And is there such a thing as modern traditional bluegrass? Well, today let's answer those questions, but more importantly, let's talk about some ways that you can sound more like Terry Bauckham. If you're not already familiar with the playing of Terry Bauckham, then you're going to want to check out his work with bands like Boone Creek, Dory Lawson and Quicksilver, Blue Ridge, Lou Reed in Carolina, Third Time Out, and his own band, The Dukes of Drive. There's a lot of material out there, and it's all really great banjo playing, but the albums that I think have had the biggest impact on the modern Scruggs-style banjo community are Dory Lawson and Quicksilver's original band, Third Time Out's putting New Roots Down, and Lou Reed in Carolina's Carolina Moon and Carolina Blue. These albums contain a lot of the songs that you'll hear in jam sessions at major festivals and conventions like IBMA and Spigma and the Galax Fiddlers Convention. And Terry Bauckham basically wrote the language the banjo players are using to play those songs. So before we really talk about the things that are important about Terry Bauckham's playing, let's take a look at some important licks that he often plays, as well as some of his backup. Here are five licks that Terry Bauckham uses all the time, and I'll give some examples of places where he's used them in recordings. The first four licks that I showed you are great replacements for your average G lick on the banjo. So anytime you're going to play something like this, or something like this, then you can substitute one of those four licks. And you can hear a couple of these licks in context in the kickoff and backup on the first verse of Mighty Mississippi, which you can find on the Doyle Lawson original band album. So what is it about all of these examples that define Terry's sound, and how does this fit into the idea of modern yet traditional bluegrass? Well, to start, you'll notice most of these licks are relatively short, and they seem to take the place of other classic Scruggs licks. With the exception of the longer chromatic lick, these licks are pretty simple. They don't attract too much attention to themselves, so they don't feel like too much of a departure from the playing of Earl Scruggs. For that reason, you could consider these licks to be relatively traditional, or at least in the spirit of traditional bluegrass. It's definitely something different in kind of a subtle way, but it still has all the things that we love about traditional bluegrass. And by traditional bluegrass, I just mean music that sounds like the music of Bill Monroe and the Bluegrass Boys, or Flat and Scruggs, or Ralph Stanley. But notice what is different about these licks, specifically that there's a strong sense of momentum towards beat one of the next measure. That's partially to do with the licks themselves, but it also has a lot to do with the way that Terry actually plays them. Instead of playing something like this, Terry will often play something like this. And instead of playing something like this, he'll play something like this. 
He's playing harder and louder with more attitude, and he's adding multiple notes on beat one of that next measure, which creates a much bigger sound. And if you listen to the recordings that I mentioned earlier, then you'll notice that over the years, the other members in these bands start to play in a way that complements this type of playing. And you might have noticed that now that's a tendency of a lot of modern bands for the entire band to come in really strong, emphasizing beat one of a certain measure. And that's one of the things about this sound that we could think of as being modern. It's not to say that the bands like Flat and Scruggs or the Stanley Brothers or Bill Monroe didn't have great timing, but there certainly wasn't the same emphasis on certain beats. There wasn't a heaviness to these beats. Here's some examples of what I mean by a heavy emphasis on certain beats. Now, obviously, those examples aren't really what Terry Bauckham sounds like, and it's not really what the bands that Terry Bauckham plays in sound like, but it's kind of the next iteration. It's kind of the next generation of what that sound influenced. So to get more of this sound, experiment with how hard you're actually playing the banjo. The common wisdom is don't play too hard because you can injure yourself. You don't want to play too loud. Obviously, the banjo is known for being a very loud instrument, but the risk with taking that too far is weak banjo playing. You know, part of the reason I got into the banjo is because I heard J.D. Crow and Earl Scruggs and Terry Bauckham, and they were playing loud, and they're playing hard and aggressively, and there was drive. It's something really exciting. So if you're unwilling to kind of dig in, if you're unwilling to really pull on the strings a little bit and see what sound comes out, then you might be stuck with weak banjo playing. And when I was starting out, that was really not easy for me, and it really had more to do with confidence and authority. When I was learning to play this style of music, I didn't really feel very confident because I didn't have a lot of experience, and I didn't have a lot of authority because I didn't know a lot of the language that I was supposed to be playing. So just for the sake of practice, see if you can take some of these examples, or maybe some of the material you already know, and see if you can just dig in a little more. See if you can play a little louder, a little harder, see if you can maintain your timing, see if you can maintain your tone. And what you might find is you get more of the sound that you hear from professional banjo players. I know for myself, if I sit in my room and I practice enough, then my tone can tend to sound like somebody who's sitting in the room and practicing, where really the sound that I want is the sound of Terry Bauckham up on stage playing for a big crowd of people. Anyway, I hope you found that useful. And if you're looking for tablature of all the examples, then you can find that on Patreon, patreon.com slash Banjo. And that's also where I post a lot of bonus content that you can't find on YouTube, like live streams and bonus practice tips and extra tabs, all kinds of cool stuff. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about Bluegrass Banjo, then go ahead and subscribe to this channel and let me know in a comment below what else you'd like to hear about in a video like this. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.